Marshall Pankowski uh, of Retellier once said to me, Robert, he felt that the funding models were going back to the 19th century. In the 19th century, there was ticket revenue, yes, and then there was a wealthy patron who would underwrite the ballet or underwrite a new opera. And then we moved into the 20th century, and after the Second World War, the whole idea that governments had to participate in the arts and culture and the community of their nations. And so suddenly governments in the UK and all over were saying in Germany, you know, we must support the operas, the ballets, the theaters, or whatever. And that model came apart, rose, as it were, in which the public, the community, through their public government, engaged in their performance of their arts and their culture and their dance and whatever. But that model has weakened, and now Marshall's saying, I have to go on back and find the wealthy patron who can put the 1.2 million into the new opera, otherwise I can't do a new opera. Well, you know, there are those who would argue that, that in opera, for example, that has never changed. That Peter Gelb and Peter Gelb's predecessors at the Metropolitan Opera have always financed their brand new operas by having a wealthy socialite in Texas uh, put in $2.5 million to do the kind of money involved in creating that new opera. And, and so that patron system, uh, I think an opera hasn't changed all that much. Uh, I, I think there's something to what he says, uh, but the way I think that you can, you can counteract that is to get a wide range of, a wide range of people uh, involved in your organization uh, uh, so that they all contribute generously to the organization without any one of them having the kind of, uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, control over the artistic process that, uh, that patrons historically had. You know, my great fear is that you go back to a system in which the wealthy patron is now able to call the shots musically or theatrically. Uh, uh, you don't ever want to go back to that kind of a model. What you want to go to is a model in which you have a blend of revenue sources, uh, 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 an active, generous government combined with, a, with, with companies that support you, individuals support you, but in fact none of them are calling the shots from an artistic point of view. The shots are being called by, by the artistic leaders of those organizations. But when you look down the road, if you look at you know, in income distribution in the last 30 years and you look at the stagnant middle class, you know, lower class not doing so well, and all the revenue gains and productivity gains and uh, GDP gains going to the, the upper 10%, aren't we heading in the next 10, 15, 20 years that you do need the patron to say, uh, Peter, I want a new opera and I've come, or I want a new ballet and I've come to the NAC and here's my two million and I want it about this. Well, I, I mean, we had, a, <laughs> we had an interesting situation here just a few months ago when Joe Clark, uh, uh, the former prime minister turned 75. His daughter Catherine and uh, and his wife Maureen decided that the 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 nicest, most Canadian present they could give him uh, was uh, to commission a composition uh, uh, in his honor. And uh, and uh, and and they have actually done that. But but the interesting thing is that they are asking that the composer, if possible, be Albertan but they're not saying who that should be and they're not saying what it should be and they're not saying any of that. They're just, they're being the kind of, the kind of benign patron you hope that, uh, that, that organizations have everywhere. Uh, I think there will always be, as long as there are wealthy people in arts organizations, there will be arts organizations who, who and, and wealthy patrons who try to, uh, who each try to, uh, benefit from the other and uh, and for me uh, I work with a lot of uh, wealthy people who are extremely generous uh, uh, extremely supportive and and by and large uh, don't want to get involved in uh, in 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 uh, in telling arts organizations what to do or who to do it with occasionally it comes up and uh, and and part of my job is to quietly discourage that Ha, 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 ha.